It's Maxine here from Northumberland Zoo. Thank you very much for tuning in. Today, I want to have a wee chat with you about our new honeybee exhibit and how the bees are settling in. And I want to show you the videos of what it was like actually moving them to the zoo and then have a chat with you all about fake honey in the UK. We had a bit of a rocky start when we first got the bees in. Um, they arrived on one day and uh, we put them in the hive and unfortunately they never found the way out of the hive so they were stuck in the box. So what we did was we opened the hive back up again and let them loose, um, left their original transport box out so that we could collect them back in by eight or nine o'clock that night. Um, and they had to go away back to Peter's house uh, for one week while we made our adaptations to our hive and we brought them down again. The day that the bees came back went really, really well. I've got all the footage to show you guys. We weighed the hive and everything so that we know exactly how much our bee colony weighed at the time of moving in um, so that we can continue to weigh the hive throughout the time that they're here so we can estimate how big they are, how big the hive is and also uh, what they're producing. The beekeepers even brought down this amazing frame that they had taken from another hive and it was full, it was like 1.7 kilos of honey on it and the frames were only half the size of the ones that are in our hive and you can see front and back how thick it is. It was just solid with honey. Um, so we're hoping that, fingers crossed, at the end of the season in the autumn, that our super box, the box that's at the very top of our hive, will have lots of honey in it. But it's okay if it doesn't. You know, this is all a bit of an experiment. We're all kind of learning here. Um, we just want to make sure that we can successfully hold them and that they're happy living in the little house. If they make honey, then it's a bonus. The exhibit looks great. Um, there's an estimated 40,000 40, bees in it at the moment. Um, they're laying eggs, so when you have a little look in the window, in the viewing window, you can actually see all the cells that are all capped. Um, so those have got larvae in them that are growing. Um, the, the queen's been seen a few times, so you can actually see her popping in and out, which is pretty cool. Um, but you can see all the worker bees really busy looking after the larvae. If you, if you look in, into the cells, you can see the little larvae or big larvae and then they cap them and then obviously then they come out. And um, you can see the cleaners that are taking things out of the tube to clean the hive out. You can see the, the gatherers who are flying back in with loads of pollen. Um, so it's amazing to watch and there's loads of information on the sign there that you can actually uh, read about. And the other really cool thing is I've actually got to see a waggle dance for the very first time ever. And basically what they're doing is they're giving directions to other bees to tell them where the pollen is. Um, so depending on the direction in which the bee is walking and waggling, um, that's in relationship to where the sun is located. And then the number of steps it takes is, is related to a certain amount of distance. Um, and yeah, it gives all the other bees direction. So all the other bees kind of crowd around and watch and see uh, where the pollen is. It's just fascinating. 
One of the things that I want you to look out for when you come and see the bees here at the zoo is have a little look at the tube that's coming in and out of the building. A lot of people think that the bees are just stuck in the hive and it's like, well, no, no, they've got to go outside. So down in the bottom left, you can see this tube, it's illuminated. Um, you can see all the bees coming in and out and all the worker bees, the ones coming in, you'll see that they have these little sacks, these little bags on their legs that are full of a color. And the majority of the time it's like a yellow or an orange, but you get purples, you get blues, you get blacks, you get browns, you get all kinds of stuff. And there's a sign down there which shows you um, which type of plants that those pollens come from. Have a little look at that sign and, uh, and see if you can tell what kind of plants that the bees are harvesting pollen from. For every little honeybee, every worker bee creates one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in its lifetime. So they work so hard for 45 days and they make such a little amount, but collectively they make so much. It's amazing. The amazing thing about bees is that they are obviously pollinators and pollinators as a whole. So that includes butterflies, moths and things like that. But obviously bees are, are one of the main ones is that they pollinate 90% up to 90% of the worldwide plants. So that basically means it allows plants to reproduce and keep growing and keep existing. Um, so without pollinators, we wouldn't have any plants. And if we didn't have plants, we wouldn't have grazers. And if we didn't have grazers, we wouldn't have predators, you know. So it, it's, it's a huge knock-on effect. And without bees, you have no plants. So they are at the very, very crux of the conservation issues that we have. You know, they, they, if we lose bees, it will have a massive detrimental effect on us. And some of the things that you can do to help them is by leaving an area in your garden wild. Don't bother strimming it or weeding it for a good few months in the spring summertime because that's when the plants are seeding and that's when they need pollinate and that's what the bees really like and that's what attracts them. Buy local honey. Now we do sell it in the gift shop. Margaret has supplied us with some uh, local honey from the Anakin District Beekeepers Club. And um, I know it's expensive and pricey, but that is because it is actually the real deal. Now, what do I mean when I say that? Honey is the third most faked food on the world market. And that means that when you go to the supermarket and you buy these jars of honey that say honey on them, if you look down a little bit further, it says blend of non-EU honeys. Um, that means that it's fake or it's got a lot of fake in it. And what people do is they synthesize these sugars and they add them to it and they bulk it out and they add water and they make it more and they make it appear. It looks lovely and beautiful like honey, but it's not. It's actually got a lot of fake sugars in it and the government aren't putting any processes in place to continuously test these sources to ensure that they are genuine honeys. There's a lot of money and time and investment needed in order to test these honey products to ensure that they are actually the real deal. So it's mind blowing that there's this huge honey laundering thing going on for all these people doing it. For example, in China, the amount of honey that's been exported has increased by 80% in the last 10 years. However, the number of beehives that they have um, in the country has only increased by around 20%. So if that doesn't kind of indicate that there's a bit of a, a funny thing going on, then I don't know what does. This is really bad for beekeepers, as you can imagine, because our seven pound jar of honey that we sell in the shop, you can buy like 10 jars from the local supermarket, but that's not real honey. Beekeeping and honey production as a hobby or a thing becomes completely unsustainable um, in comparison because no one wants to pay those prices for the real honey. So you can understand why honey is a very um, lucrative business to try and tap into. And when no one's really doing any proper testing of these imported honeys that are coming in and getting sold in supermarkets, you can understand why people would take advantage of this. But you as a consumer have that choice to make those decisions a bit better. And obviously next time you buy honey, double check the label, see where it's come from and buy local honey if you can. Um, and if not, just don't buy it at all, because the last thing we want to do is encourage this trade of fake honeys. Um, we're super, super pleased with the bee exhibit and um, there's loads of information there to learn about them. And the bees are showing really well through the through the holes. So, so far, so good. Touch wood. Uh, second time round, the bees are doing great. And Margaret from the Anik District Beekeepers Association is supplying us with all kinds of really cool products for the shop uh, made out of beeswax, which are made from local bees. Um, 
local beehives around here um, so she's made all kinds of candles and um, we've got honey there as well local honey too and uh, that's doing really well as well well i hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about bees now i appreciate that not everyone is into bugs and insects and that's totally fine i promise that this is the last video on bees for a while Next time, we'll have a wee look about what else has been going on around the zoo other than in the Native Species Building. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. And if you haven't done already, please do uh, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Every subscription helps and it helps support the zoo. We are a non-profit and we are family run. Uh, so we super appreciate everyone who's subscribed so far. Thank you. And if you haven't been to the zoo, you still need to pre-book your vi visits. Um, you can do so on our website at www.northumberlandzoo.co.uk and hopefully we shall see you soon. Bye!